Are you glad to be here this morning? All right, come on, get out of here. I was going to be glad to be here. Amen. I was glad to be here. To me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. It's been a rough week, but in the midst of it all, God is still worthy to be praised. Amen. We honor the Lord. Amen. Victory is mine. Victory is mine.
morning, everybody. Happy Father's Day to everyone. It's a blessing to be a father. A blessing straight from God. To uh, allow a man to have fathership. It's truly a blessing. And you must take care of of that blessing. Amen. Don't take it for granted. How happy is the one who does not walk in the advice of the wicked or stand in the pathway of sinners or sit in the company of mockers. Instead, his delight is in the laws, in the law, the Lord's instructions. And he meditates on it day and night. He's like a tree planted beside flowing streams that bears its fruit in its season, and whose leaves do not wither, wither. Whatsoever he does prosper. The wicked are not like this. Instead, they are like shadows that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand up in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous but the way of the wicked leads to ruin. I just read Psalm number one in its entirety. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father God, we come to you now. Lifting you up. Give you all our honor, glory, and praise. Yes. For we know that you are a great God, a God above all other gods. Amen. For you're a God, for you're Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, the first and the last, the one that has all power in his hands. Yes. Yes. Power to heal, power to save, power to deliver, power to restore, power to redeem, power to lift up, a bow down head. Yes. Heavenly Father, for you have all all power. And so we come to you for no shape, form, or fashion, Heavenly Father. We come just saying, first and foremost, thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We're not too above and, and, and too proud to say thank you because we realize from where our source, our help comes from. So we say thank you because you washed over us last night. You woke us up with your finger of mercy, Heavenly Father, allowing us to see a brand new day. Yes, Lord. And then, Heavenly Father, you gave us the activities of our limbs, Heavenly Father. Yeah. Little food on our table, little money in our pocket, clothes upon our back. But most importantly, Heavenly Father, you put in our, our right mind, Heavenly Father, and the spirit to come out and worship and praise your holy and righteous name. And for that, we say thank you right now. Yeah. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for being a God on our side. Yeah. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for putting your holy hands upon each and every last one of us, letting us know, Heavenly Father, that we can do all things through you. We ask you, Heavenly Father, just continue to be with us, guide us, and strengthen us. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who duty binds us to pray for, those that are sick and shut in, those that are in bereavement right now, those that need a company keeper right now, those that need a financial blessing right now, those that need their territory enlarged right now. Those that just need you right now, Heavenly Father. So we pray for them. For we know that you can and we know that you will, Heavenly Father. Be that which they're in need of. Go with us and stand by us. Add to the church as you see fit, Heavenly Father. Be with our pastor right now. Touch him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, and then we just be careful to give you all the honor, glory, and praise. For you truly worthy, Heavenly Father. For you, great God. Oh, give thanks to you. For you have done great works in our lives, Heavenly Father. Thank you for what you've already done. 
Thank you for what you're doing right now, Heavenly Father. And we claim the victory because we know we're going to do it, Heavenly Father. So we thank you for what you're going to do in the future for us, Heavenly Father. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you because you're a great God. Thank you for your good God. Thank you for your merciful God. Thank you for your just for your grace, Heavenly Father. We just thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then, Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the fathers, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, for all those who sacrifice, Heavenly Father, and done what they're supposed to do, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we're not looking for praise and pat on the back for doing what we're supposed to do. But it's just good to be nice, Heavenly Father. And we just thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us, Heavenly Father, to be fathers. And we and we just say thank you to all the fathers that are up under the sound of my voice and all the fathers that are doing what they're supposed to do, Heavenly Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is our prayer we ask in your daughter's son, Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and give God a breathe.
of all the good things mm -hmm. that has been done by our God. Yeah. It is an antiphonal song, which means that this song is full of passion, compassion towards God for his greatness. Yeah. Because in these 26 verses, each verse has the phrase, his mercy endureth forever. And I don't know about you, but I don't know who I would be if I did not have the Lord's mercy. It is a consideration of his greatness, his goodness, his loving kindness. And I don't know about you there, but it makes me want to just say thank you for all that he's done for me. The words for his mercy has us to realize that God is everlasting. Yes. Yes. And in all 26 of these verses right. of this particular song, we are reminded 26 times mm -hmm. that his mercy yeah. endureth forever. Yeah. This song was put together and meant to be sang by the temple choir or either a soloist that would sing the song and the response would be for his mercy endureth forever. The psalm focuses on creation, it focuses on redemption, as well as the province of God. His loving kindness, his loyalty to us, even when we are acting at our worst. Yeah. 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 His love and his mercy mm -hmm. never fail. Yeah. Yeah. This psalm is a call to worship yeah. Yeah. to every child of God that hears the word yeah. for his mercy yeah. endureth forever. Yeah. Right. I don't know about you, but mercy right. stood by my bed all night long yeah. Yeah. and there I witness here. Mercy watched over me all night long. And then early this morning, before the sun came up, touched me with a finger of love, enabled me to rise and see another day. I don't know how you feel about it, but mercy was the provision that put food on my table and the clothes on my back. Mercy was the one that put the air in my lungs. Can we have church just a little while? God is good to us, y'all. And I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for his mercy. Well, who is this God that prevents, that, that provides us this mercy? His name is Jehovah, the company keeper. Jehovah Shammah, El Shaddai, Adonai, Elohim. Who is God, judge, and creator. Yeah. Elohim. Jehovah Jireh. Yeah. Which means he provides for us. Yeah. Jehovah Shalom. Yeah. He is the God of my peace. Yeah. Jehovah Sitkanu. Means he is the righteous judge. Right. But let's get just a little more personal. Right. Who is this God right. that we serve? Uh -huh. And why should we give thanks? Well, I got activity on my limbs. Y'all said amen to that. I can't kick too high, but I'm kicking. I can wave my hand. He is the God that provided eyes to see, legs to walk, feet to talk, and a mind to think, along with a mouth to talk. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For it is his mercy that endureth forever. One of the things that we have to keep in mind is that we ought to all give thanks to this God who is alive and well. For it was on a Friday that the Son of God marched up a hill called Calvary. It was on a Friday that the Son of God was nailed to the cross. 
for your sins and mine. Oh, give thanks because they nailed his hands and they nailed his feet. Oh, give thanks for around the night power. He said, Father, into thy head I commend my spirit. Oh, give thanks because at the night power he died for our justification. He died to redeem us back to the Father. Oh, give thanks because he died and didn't stay dead. Oh, give thanks because early Sunday morning, somebody ought to be with you right now. Early Sunday morning, I give thanks. I give thanks. Oh, I give thanks because the Son of God that died on Friday rose on Sunday morning. Oh, Oh, give thanks. He's my coming keeper. Oh, give thanks. He's my lily of the valley. Oh, give thanks. My bright and morning star. Oh, give thanks. I give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Put your hands together and give him some praise. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks.
Facebook worshipers, virtual worshipers, good afternoon to you all. Thank you for worshiping with us here at the Prospect Hill Church. We're so glad to have you a part of us on this Father's Day. Amen. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Amen. 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 God bless you. Father, this sacrifice, thank you for your sacrifice and rearing your children. Amen. Let's celebrate our fathers on today. Lord God, we thank you now for our time of worship together, for the, the word has gone forth and the songs of Zion will bless us now. In this your word, we ask for preaching power. Recognize we can do nothing till you show up. So have your way in this place. In the name of Jesus, crucified, risen Savior, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. The Gospel of John, chapter 7, that is so refreshing to say. <laughs> Gospel of John, chapter 7. <clears throat> Starting in verse number 1. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee. But he did not want to walk in Judea because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of the tabernacles was at hand. His brothers therefore said to him, Depart from here and go into Judea, that your disciples also may see the works that you are doing. For no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For even his brothers did not believe in him. I'm going to stop right there. I will finish the rest. I'm going to start right there for our reading. I'm going to preach on the subject, I can't believe this. I can't believe this. That verse number five said, for even his brothers mm -hmm. did not believe him. I can't believe this. This is in Gospel of John chapter three, in the conversation of Nicodemus. Um, Jesus tells them in that verse 16, for God so loved the world yes. that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever uh, believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Uh -huh. um, one word that rung out to me as I prepared was that word perish. Mm -hmm. The word perish is polymene in the Greek text. It means to destroy utterly. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, to to um, to destroy utterly means that there is no longer any existence of oneself, and that is the danger of unbelief, because we put ourselves in a perishing situation. So how be it the brothers of Jesus Christ are in a situation that they don't believe? All right. How is it that the Immaculate Conception could take place in such a household and the story not be told of how his existence came to be? How could it be? Did Mary not do her motherly job to inform her children of who their older brother is? All right, Did so. Joseph negate his um, job as a father to teach his other sons about who their uh, older brother is? Did they forget the conversation that both of them had with Gabriel when they announced that they will have the Messiah, that his name shall be called Jesus, and he will save us from our sins? How is it that the brothers of Jesus don't believe? And now we're seeing them because right now in this particular portion of the text, 
We're on our way to Calvary. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus' ministry is just about over. And now we're in a critical state that Jesus' name is ringing all over town. From Galilee to Judea, but there is a problem. There are more haters than there are lovers of his ministry. So there being a dissension, but even a dissension in the Lord's family. How could the Lord's family not believe? How could he break bread with his brothers and see him doing these miraculous things, but yet they can't believe? And so in this text, Jesus is, is, is waiting out going to the Feast of the Tabernacle. Um, the Feast of the Tabernacle is also called the Feast of Booth. It was, separate, it was celebrated between September and October. And it was the most, um, the most popular of the three feasts. Right, right, right. They were celebrated by building booths on their house, on the flat top roofs of the house. And there they would dwell for seven days. On the eighth day, they would celebrate the wilderness years that God had kept them in the wilderness. Yes. He had kept them in the desert, but usually Christ goes to these celebrations. All right, it's mandated in the law that the men will show themselves at these celebrations, but Jesus is using wisdom because there is threat for him to be killed. The text says that he did not walk in Judea because the Jews sought to kill him. Now, he was not um, walking away from his job. He knew his destiny, but he stayed away. He, he stayed away, but he stays away. He goes to Galilee. But Galilee and Judea are under two different jurisdictions. Yeah, yeah, right. And so he can hide out there in Galilee. But let's look at these brothers. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus had four brothers and two sisters. His brothers were James, uh -huh. Simon, yeah. Jude, and Joseph. Now, we don't know the names of his sister. Now, there's an argument or a matter of opinions about these siblings. Of course, the Catholic Church, Catholicism, they want to keep Mary pure, so they suggest that Mary did not have these children, that these were children that Joseph had from a previous relationship. Now, there's another opinion that says that um, these children were Joseph's um, brother's kids and his brother died and he took in his kids and really these are Jesus' cousins. All right. All right. Yeah. Then there is traditional opinion that we hold to is that after Jesus was born then Joseph and Mary consummated their relationship and then they birthed children. Right, However the opinion is, whatever it is what you want, that's what you want but that's what they talk about. Right. The theologues talk about and, uh, and so in this relationship, it is, it's amazing how the ones most closest to you right. are the hardest Say. ones yeah. to make yeah. believe. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. You, you ever, you ever, right. you ever uh, have a sibling that, that, that you're trying to improve yourself? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing your best to improve yourself. And, 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 and they still can't believe. Okay, maybe they maybe this. That they're the ones that are closest to you are the ones that seem to doubt you the most. But I, I'm regarded, I, I'm reminded, excuse me, of a particular text that when Jesus was teaching, they was asked, isn't this uh, Jesus and his mother, his brothers, our sisters are here with us? And his comment was, who is? My mother, who is my brother, who is my sister, but the ones who does the will of the Father. So Jesus was not caring about a relationship for kinship, but he came to bring relationship to all of us. But these brothers, they seem kind of shady. They, they seem kind of shady. They, they seem like they're, they, they, they're boasting, but yet they're critiquing their brother. 
Notice what verse 3 says. His brothers therefore said to him, depart from here and go into Judea. Now it's 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 no it's no secret that there is much disdain for Jesus Christ. Right. And we saw it clearly that folks are walking away from him. There, there's a divided opinion when you keep reading this chapter 7. There's a divided opinion of, uh, of is he a good man or not? But his own brothers want to send him to Judea. I don't know if, they're, if this is a smart alley comment or are they just trying to be funny? I don't, I, I, I don't know. But they said his brother said to him, depart from here and go into Judea. They know that they want to kill. They know that they want to kill him in Judea. Yeah. And they said, "Listen, listen. I tell you what. I tell you what. Uh, verse four. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Verse three. The rest of the verse. He says that your disciples also may see the works that you are doing. In other words, listen. Go show yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Prove yourself. Let me see. Show your credentials right. and don't hide out. Right. You say you're the Messiah." They go out there and show them that you're the Messiah. Prove to them that you are the Messiah. Go where danger is and show them. Now, question is asked, and again, there's a juggle in the theologues that some are saying that they are they are supporting his ministry, while another argument says no, they are disapproving of his ministry. Yeah. And so I, I, I tend to land towards the latter of the argument that they are in disapproval of his ministry because they don't believe. Yeah. Oh, yes, and because they don't believe, I'm sure that there must have been some sibling rivalry somewhere. Yeah. He's getting too much attention. Yeah. Yeah. He's doing too many miraculous things. But how could, watch this, how could the Messiah that would save us Come from Galilee. Oh, yes, now that's the Judeans from Judea saying, ain't no way in the hell that our Messiah is coming from Galilee. Surely he cannot come from Galilee. He's doing all these miracles. He's not even doing it in front of the right crowd. Yeah. Oh, yes, but yet, remember Jesus said, prophet is that I honor his own country, but also in his own home. So, these brothers are unbelieving. Well, watch the text. For no one does anything in secret. Verse 4. I'm almost done. We can go to brunch in a minute. While he himself <laughs> seeks to be known openly. Uh -huh. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. Yeah. Uh -huh. Don't hide it. Okay. But better yet, you say you Messiah, you show it. Go on out there and do something. Work some, twerk some, do something. <laughs> do something. You say who you are, do it. And today is the same mentality. Because we still got people who can't believe. He's been making ways out of no way. He still can't believe. He's been opening and blinding eyes. We still don't believe. He's been providing for everybody I need, and we still don't believe. We even went through a pandemic, a pandemic, and still going through it. And there are some who still can't believe. Well, this is the good news. This is the good news. The good news is, and 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 if you don't get nothing else out of this sermon, I hope this is it. The good news is, is that God works on His time. That's the good news. Yes. And, and while the brothers were setting up, the Lord had already set up. Okay. Verse number five. For well, even his brothers did not believe. But look at verse six. Then Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come. <laughs> My time. My time. Kairos in the Greek text. My time. My do measure. My fixed and definite time, my opportunity, my time when I'm going to do it. I'm 
not going to go because you want me to go. Right, right. But I know they're seeking to kill me. Yeah. And I know where my destination is. But it ain't that time yet. Right. Nor is it the place. Right. It ain't the time. It ain't the place. Right. And I don't want to rush ahead of myself. But I know that Jesus handled Calvary. And Calvary did not handle him. Uh, Y'all missed that. If, if you read through the text. They tried to put their hands on him. As you read further the text. And they could not. Because it wasn't time. In the duration of time. In the fullness of time. It wasn't time yet. If you go back to the feast. He's still got about six more months left. Because he's got to go over at Passover. Because he is the Passover lamb. He is the atonement for sacrifice. He is the independence day. He said, no, it's my time. Look at the text. He said, my time has not yet come. But your time is always ready. And, and this is why your time is always uh, uh, um, ready. And, and watch the text. He says, the world cannot hate you, but it hates me. Because I testify of it and that his works are evil. Jesus' brothers agreed with the command I'm sorry, with the common opinion of their day concerning good and evil. They agree with the common opinion of the day about good and evil. And so since those people disagreed that Christ is the Messiah, that he is the Son of God, his brothers fell into the same thinking. Now here is a man that your mother birth that did not require semen. This is the man. But he said, the world cannot hate you. The world can't hate you because you're ignorant just like this. Right. Yeah. The, the world can't hate, can't hate you because you're not calling out the evil that the world is presenting. Jesus is public enemy number one. And they have to get rid of him. But he said, my time has not come. My time has not come. But later on in the text, watch the text. I'm almost done. I know we got to get out of here. Get the brunch and things. He says in verse number eight, uh, I tell you what, you go on up to the feast. Yep. Uh -huh. You go ahead on up there. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm not yet going mm -hmm. to this feast. He says again, for my time All right, sir. has not yet come. All right. okay. My time has not yet come for the nails in my hands. My time has not yet come for the rivets in my feet. My time has not yet come. But watch this. On the nose to the brothers that when that time comes, they're going to go from I can't believe this to I'm a believer. Jesus said my time hasn't come. I know my assignment and I'm not running from my assignment. But I got a little bit more work to do. But my time will come. And when that time comes, he's going to take on nails. He's going to take on the ribs on his feet, the hole in the side. He's going to die. He's going to get up from the grave with all power, both in heaven and earth, in his hands. But what about his brothers? Where do they lie? Well, Acts chapter 1, starting at verse 12. There is an account about everybody that was in the upper room prayer meeting. Yeah. But down in verse 13, they named the disciples who are in the room. Yes, Peter's in the room. Right, right, right. Andrew's in the room. Yeah. Bartholomew is in the room. Yeah. Thaddeus is in the room. Yeah. Judas, the son of James, is in the room. Right. But 
in verse number 14, it mentions his mother and his brothers. His brothers wouldn't be in the room if they had not come to a belief. And two of his brothers left record with us by the epistle of John, I'm sorry, but the epistle of James and the epistle of Jude. James was the bishop of the church of Jerusalem. And he wrote to a church that was scattering abroad. And he had the nerve to say, count it all joy. When you fall into various temptations, knowing that the testing, yes sir, of your faith produces patience. The same one who did not believe, the same one that wanted to send him to Judea, tells the church to count it all joy. Consider it joy that when you have trials and tribulations, now here it is, his brother is facing it, but after resurrection, there's a reality because when he resurrects in your life, your life comes home. The light comes home. That he is the light of the world. That he is the bread of life. That he is the living water. It's a reality when you experience his resurrection. But then there is Jude. Jude preaches to us about apostates. That is those who have fell away from the faith. And Jude had nerve to say, now unto him. He did, not, he did not identify him. He said, now unto him. Who is him? He didn't say, my brother. He didn't say, my friend. He didn't say, my older brother. He said, now unto him. Because there was only one of him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his glory with the with power, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Jude said he's able. James said, call it all joy. What a difference it makes when you believe that Jesus is the Son of God. What a difference it makes when it comes into your life. Oh, what joy that floods my soul since Jesus came until my life. Gardener. <laughs> but, 
but he wasn't a gardener. Gardener, he was the lily of the valley. <laughs> he, he's a rose of Sharon. So, so they, they, they looking for him. They go get word to John and Peter. John and Peter take off running. John stops. Peter goes in the tomb. He sees the napkin folded. And that napkin symbolizes, I still got some work to do. But could you see his brothers? They heard his teachings. They saw his miracles. And yet, they did not believe. Can you see his brother's face when he showed up I, I, I'm sure that it had to bring them to it, their knees. I'm sure that was an enlightening experience yes, because they saw the resurrection and the life right in front of their face. Wow. Beloved, perhaps you need to have a crucifixion so you can know that he, can, he lives and raises up in the resurrection. Yeah, I want you to think about that. Yeah, think about that. I want you to think about that. Because in our reality, I'm looking at some folk that's having a hard time believing this stuff. We preaching this every week. But do you really believe? Do you really believe? And if you believe, it ought to show. Not just in your shout, not just in your praise, it'll show in your life. I'm going to my seat now, but I want to tell you today, only believe all things are possible if you only believe. Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody come to Christ. Everybody come to Christ. Huh? Everybody come to Christ today. The old preacher said, my little Christian friends can't have baptism. Is that one today? <laughs> uh, let's, let's get out of here. Come on, let's, let's, let's give. Let's get ready to get it. Sunday, tell them what it's for. Amen. And go ahead and get that out and uh, be ready to bring it as you come, okay? Amen. It's Mission Day. Mission Day. Let's do our mission. You got it. It's right there on my team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mission Sunday. Came on me. 
Amen. Amen. The name is recipient of the Holy Ghost. Hmm. <laughs> what time you got? What time is it? It's who? Okay, I got time to go to lunch and brunch. <laughs> Treat me like a king, which is out there for my people. I'm trying to go to lunch. I wasn't playing with my mom and my sister and Kelsey today. I said, Yeah, I act up if I want to. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, let's give. <laughs> I'm looking at you like, What you doing? <laughs> Oh, you gift up, we give it to the Lord. We give it to the Lord. Is that our work? <laughs> we give it to your Lord. Our yeah. gifts. Our gifts. Receive our gifts. Receive our Amen. 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 Friendship. Second night will be at Faith. Third, last night we will be here, and um, 
good fellowship for me and my sons in the ministry. And that ministry, we have an excellent preacher coming to share with us. Reverend Brandon Michael Dyer coming to be our guest evangelist. And we got, we, we getting going. I can't sit still, I go sit still. We getting going. So the second half of the year is on and popping. Y'all hear me? Yeah. It's on and popping. Let's get back to work. Yeah. And then our vacation Bible school is in August. Back in motion. That's what our theme is from the book of Ezra. When the captives return after after the um, Babylonian captivity, they had to get back in motion. They negated worship and went back to their natural lives. And they suffered in their natural lives because they didn't handle spiritual matters. Y'all yeah, don't catch it. Some of us start negating some spiritual things after this pandemic here. Yeah. And we suffered from it. I'm just saying what I'm saying. All right, let's keep in prayer, Minister Tracy Jackson. Keep in prayer, Sister Stephanie Honeywood. Stephanie had to go back to the hospital, but she in. So keep her in your prayers. And um, uh, there's some other, um, Lola, Reverend Gary Tyler, those who are homebound, bless them. Pray for them, amen. 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 All right, lift your hands, receive a benediction. Bless you. The Lord keep him. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace. The Lord bless you going out and you coming in his for now and forevermore. The Lord bless you, your children, and your children's children. The Lord bless every aspect of your life. Now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, the Bible that's his for now and forever. All God's people said, Amen. Peace be with you. Have a wonderful day.